It is finally over 80 degrees, so we are putting our Velet 12 volt air conditioner to the test to see how it performs. In our install video, we received a ton of comments arguing whether or not 12 volt air conditioners really made sense and were practical for a van. So before we get started, I want to acknowledge some of those comments and just give my opinion on the matter. I mean, everyone has a right to their own opinion, but here are my thoughts. The goal of our van is to be completely off grid with sustainable energy and battery bank so we don't have to go to campgrounds and plug into shore power. To run any AC in a van you need a pretty decent electrical setup which you can see here and we have a simplified electrical video on our channel where you can learn more about our setup. 12 volt air conditioners are arguably the most efficient air conditioners for any 12 volt system because you don't have to invert that power or convert it to 120 volt for some of the older type air conditioners that you see on RVs. Some people said they could get a window unit for 250 bucks at Home Depot but this isn't really practical for van, especially when you have other options. I'm not really sure where you would put this because this would have to go in a wall and walls are extremely valuable with the limited space in a van. And not to mention, you would have this giant piece sticking out the side of your van. People were arguing with me about how 120 volt air conditioners are more efficient, but that's simply not true because even eight amps at 120 volts equals 80 amps at 12 volts. And most 12 volt air conditioners run below like 60 amps. I know this one does as well. And we'll see that in the test. So I don't know, I'm trying to uh, understand where people are coming from, but I really do think the 12 volt air conditioners on the roof make the most sense because of the practicality, the location doesn't get in the way of anything else. But anyway, let's get into the test. That's why we're here and let's see how this thing performs. We just made it to the beach and we have two thermometers to see what the temperature inside the van is. And this one is reading at 90 and so is this, the digital one as well. And it's in the low 80s right now outside. So realistically, if we were coming back to our van, we would open up all the doors to let the temperature inside the van match the temperature outside before starting the air conditioner. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Because realistically, we're not gonna be running the air conditioner 24 seven because the goal of van life for us is to go explore the outdoors and then come back when we want to eat or sleep or whatever, hang out, but we're not living in here all day long. Both back doors are open. We have the slider door open as well. So now we got a beautiful cross breeze going through the temperature's going to drop. So let's turn it on and we will rate how much power this thing is going to consume. Before we turn it on, I would just want to mention we are at 100% battery capacity. We have 540 amp hours of Battleborn lithium batteries and 600 watts of solar on the roof. So we'll see where our battery state is at the end of this test. After we go, enjoy the beach. So I have my voltmeter here. That's going to tell me how many amps this is drawing. We're going to turn it on, we're going to put it on high. And we are pulling in 13 amps at the moment. And it's starting to climb now that the compressor is turning on. We're at roughly around 35 amps, so it's really not that big of a draw off the initial start and running at full speed. The GX Touch 50 is saying we're consuming 608 watts of energy and our solar is pulling in about 420, 480, depending if there's cloud coverage right now. So we should be able to run this the entire time we're at the beach and have plenty of battery life left over. I'm not sure what happened to the camera's audio, but after running the AC for about five minutes on full blast, we had 65 degrees of cool air coming out of the AC with an amp draw around 40 amps. The temperature outside was in the mid 80s and I was trying to explain that the AC is going to be fighting the elements against the sun beating down on the van with no window covers or insulation. At full blast, we're consuming roughly 595, 600 watts and we have 483 watts of solar energy coming in so we're going to be able to run this thing for a pretty long while and at nighttime i'd imagine we probably run it on eco mode because the sun's not beating down on the van so we'd probably be able to run this thing all night long without any issue about running out of batteries even while using power to run other things like our appliances our laptops and things like that we let the air conditioner do its thing and spend the next three hours on the beach to enjoy this random hot day in april all right test her out How's it? Oh, feels all right. It's pretty cool in here. It's pretty good. Oh, it's so nice right here. So the temperature is down to 82. It's we started out at 90, so that's pretty good considering the sun is still beating down on the van and we don't have it insulated or any of the windows covered with sun reflectors. So I would say that's pretty good. We made it down to 80 percent, 79 percent now. It is three o'clock, so we were on the beach for three hours and we only consume 21% of our 
battery bank, which is freaking amazing. I want to open up the app really quick to see how much time we have left going at this consumption rate of 600 watts with roughly 400 watts of solar power. So right now it says we're pulling 40 amps still, 39.4 amps, and we have three and a half hours of this consumption rate remaining. Hold up, I made a mistake. Since turning on the AC, we consumed 39.6 amp hours, but our current draw was only 15 amps or 200 watts due to our solar offsetting the draw from the AC, which was pulling roughly 47 amps at the time. That's at maximum capacity with the sun now being a little bit over since it's later in the day. We're not maximizing our solar panel array. So I would say that's pretty good. Realistically, we probably wouldn't keep it running while we're outside of the van. We would come back, open up everything, and then turn it on while we're inside the van or getting ready for bedtime. So, In terms of noise, this unit is maxed out right now, and it is a bit noisy in here, I'm not going to lie. But on EcoFlow, it's really quiet. I'll put it on EcoFlow real quick. And that's just on fan speed level 2, where maximum was on fan speed level 5, I believe. So just like a max air fan, you'll hear a higher noise when you speed up the fan all the way. Going back to turbo. And I'll go outside and show you how loud it gets. So I'm standing right next to the van right now. It's on and it's no louder than any cars driving by. The cars driving by is actually way louder than this. So it really wouldn't disrupt your neighbor. It really wouldn't disrupt people walking by you. They'd probably just think of fans on. So. That's something to consider. I don't have a decibel reader, unfortunately, so I can't give you that information, but it's pretty good. We're on our way home right now, and I'm just looking at the thermostat on the car, and it's 87 degrees, so it's in the high 80s, and the AC units still perform pretty well. So that wraps up the AC performance test. Let me know what you guys think, and if you're interested in getting a Velet AC unit, then consider using our affiliate promo code MOTM50 to get $50 off your order and help support us as well, so we'd really appreciate it if you used our code. It's a win-win. But anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.